Cornwall's rivers are definitely worth exploring. And even when it's blowing a hoolie out at sea, they offer sufficient shelter for an afternoon of exploration. If you find yourself in Plymouth, instead of cruising the usual spots, head upstream on the Tamar River. Just before reaching the bridge, on the Cornish side, is the wide estuary of the River Liner. If you explore on a rising tide, you leave behind the hectic city and enter another peaceful world. The wide river penetrates deep into rolling Cornish farmland. And depending what your boat draws, you can get as far upstream as St. Germans. At low tide, most of this wide sluggish river dries out safe for Dandy Hole and all times anchorage. It's not more than a small pool, really. A perfect, get away from it all secret spot. To many, the Helford is the quintessential Cornish River. Its wide, east-facing estuary is a yachtsman's dream, with picturesque Gillan Creek to its southern side. As the estuary narrows, Helford passages crammed with swinging moorings and a pub on either side. Though hard to believe today, Helford village used to be quite an important port. Trading ships once brought French rum, tobacco and lace from the continent. During the Napoleonic Wars, Pirates and free traders populated the reaches of the river. Daphne du Maurier's novel, Frenchman's Creek, tells the story of one of these. Falmouth and the Carrick Roads form the third deepest natural harbour in the world, and the deepest in Western Europe. Until steamships took over, fast packet ships sailed to and from Falmouth, bringing news from every corner of the empire making the town Britain's information hub. Falmouth is definitely worth a visit, among the best of Cornish towns. It's got everything. There are marinas where a berth can almost always be found, and if not, the harbour commissioners will help with swinging moorings. A main street crammed with independent shops, restaurants and pubs, plus the Maritime Museum on Events Square. And Falmouth hosts many varied water-based events, including the Oyster Festival, working boat races, the Sea Shanty Festival, and Falmouth Week, which is one of the country's leading sailing regattas. The upper reaches of the River Fal often hold surprises. In the wooded narrows, Ship owners from time to time take advantage of the deep sheltered river for long-term layups of their vessels. The King Harry Ferry provides a shortcut to the Roseland Peninsula, with St Moors at its tip. Cornwall's other principal river is the Foy. It's still a busy harbour for the export of China clay from the quarries in the middle of the county. While Foy town is the magnet for most visiting boat owners, Polruan, on the other side of the estuary, should not be missed. Its steep, narrow streets still hold the charm of a true Cornish working village. I definitely recommend the ham, egg and chips at the Ship Inn. And it's also worth getting into the tender to discover the upper reaches of the river as it cuts deep into the Cornish countryside. You can get as far as the picturesque village of Lerin at the very head of the estuary.
But the one question I'm always asked is which of my favourite secret spots around the Cornish coast? I'll reveal these next time.